throughout human history, there have been questions that even the smartest minds could not definitively answer. How were the ancient pyramids built? Who actually shot JFK? I really don't know. Why would anyone want to marry this bitch? All of those are thought-provoking things to ponder, but there is one question that has been at the forefront of the greatest minds of this century, and that question is, can sausage finger Steven Seagal actually fight? That's a good question. Is he a true martial artist and tough guy? Or is he just a big, fat, angry bully? Definitely the latter. Well, my fellow Seagalians, we are going to answer this question and inevitably win a Nobel Prize in the process. That makes no sense. And I think you just might find the conclusion somewhat shocking. <laughs> now, before we dive in and confirm that Steven Seagal is indeed the greatest martial artist and baddest man that ever lived, I'd like to take a moment and thank today's special sponsor, Steven Seagal's Lightning Bolt. Harnessed from the ball sweat of Big Daddy Seagal, this heavenly elixir is infused with real flakes of ball sack skin. So you know it's the real deal. Nothing sus. Lightning Bolt gives you the energy to conquer all those grueling activities in your life, like sitting down and talking. I was not born on a fucking turnip truck, man. Sitting down and smoking cigars. My son, again. Yeah. Sitting down and fighting. <laughs> And of course, sitting down while your stunt double does all the work. Lightning Bolt, guaranteed to make you a lying, lazy, sleazy piece of crap. It's good to be the king, isn't it? And guess what? What's gonna happen to you if you drink Lightning Bolt? Warning. Side effects may include capture and submission to Almighty Lord Seagal. Now in all seriousness, I would really like to thank all my Seagalians for their support and kind words. This community is absolutely awesome and constantly expanding, and we'd love to have you aboard, so if you're keen to join a bunch of legends who enjoy hanging shit on Seagal, then please feel free to like and subscribe. I need you, bro. Okay, now getting back on track. Obviously, this is a complex and nuanced subject, similar to something like quantum physics, so I think the best approach will be to break it up into five sections. One for each chin Seagal is currently sporting. Oh snap! 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 Part 1 will be an overview of Tubby's martial arts and action career. Part 2 will be the stuntman Sloppy Steven abused. Part 3 will have a look what actual martial artists think about him. Part 4 We'll have a look at what Steven himself thinks. And part five, my informed, educated, unbiased, and completely objective conclusion. In order to dedicate the appropriate level of respect this topic deserves, there will be a part one and two. I don't want to do some Zack Snyder, Justice League, self-indulgent, drawn out crap, so I'll break it up. Now let us begin with a quick little overview of our chubby chieftain, Seagal. Born in 1952, right atop Mount Olympus, Steven Seagal wasn't like most kids. By the time Seagal had turned 8, he had already reached Super Saiyan Level 3 and attained the ability to turn into a black dude and join an all-black band. I don't know what color I am. Fast forward to the early 70s, and Seagal morphed back into a white dude and was practicing both Karate and Aikido. Pronunciation very good. And by all accounts, Steven's accounts, he was already the greatest martial artist in Japan and the USA. He only began to attain more notoriety and attention. In the early 80s, Seagal was doing appearances on TV shows like The Merv Griffin Show, showing off his thick, luscious hair. But if I say, push me over or break my finger, this is my baby finger. And Merv, come on up behind him and just push on him. I wanna, I wanna, we're not gonna hurt you, you're not gonna have to fall down. I'm not your nephew. He was hosting a keto seminars in the early 90s throughout USA and apparently pregnant with his first child if his gut is anything to go by. Or maybe he ate a baby. Who knows? I a baby! Seagal was at his peak. He had managed to convince everyone he was a badass, martial arts, tough guy. 
Well, not everyone, but we'll get to that later on. Hard to kill, Mark for death, and Under Siege were all under his belt, and it looked like Papa Seagal could do no wrong. He's gonna fuck this up. The Millennium rolled around, and Sausage Fingers didn't know it, but his career was rolling downhill fast. Nonetheless, his plans for world domination continued as he released a critically acclaimed album Bullshit, motherfucker. and his infamous energy drink, said to instantly give you 50% more testosterone and hair regrowth. <laughs> By this stage, Seagal was well over 300 pounds and waddling around like a pelican that had eaten a hippo. He no longer took part in any strenuous action scenes and very often took part in very little scenes at all. He developed his love for cookies, turnip trucks and snatching birthdays, and today still practices martial arts with his own personal beat-down dummy. What is it like to be Steven Seagal's practice dummy? Uh, <laughs> is it a lot of pain? Yeah, yeah, a lot of pain, yes. Okay. This is my job, kind of, you know. <laughs> Considering how much actual work the stuntmen do in making Seagal look competent, you would think he would be overly gracious and grateful to these fellas. Wrong. Wrong. Anybody who knows anything will tell you a true martial artist and tough guy doesn't bully or beat up on people unnecessarily. Names like Michael Jai White, Jackie Chan, Scott Adkins, or Donnie Yen spring to mind. But me? I, I think that's, that's some chicken shit stuff to hit anybody, right? Including me. I would never do that to somebody. Now, so me taking pride in hurting Seagal, I find no gratification in that. That's bullshit. You know, that's absolute bullshit. And I wouldn't, I got, you know, like I say, I got to look at myself in the mirror. Then there's this dick. Steven Seagal hits the shit out of people. That's a unique situation. In those films he did with Steven Seagal, he was actually hitting the stuntmen like oh, for real? Oh, hell yeah. He's known for that. He's known for that. Yeah, hell yeah. So how would the stuntmen react after getting punched by Steven Seagal? Ouch. They try to, they, you know, they try to deal with it because they're stuntmen. Where Seagal put a stuntman's face literally through the glass for real. Does that sound like the behavior of a true martial artist or actual tough guy? I found someone who had a nonsensical explanation for Seagal's brutality. Basically, Seagal is just too badass and powerful for mere mortals. If we're talking about criticisms, one of the main ones that I saw was that his old stuntmen would become kind of upset that he was so yeah. harsh. And maybe you saw in the video was that he didn't hold back a lot, but actually he did hold back a lot. The thing is, he has such a natural build for tremendous power that he doesn't even have to try to hurt you. So I can imagine being a stuntman working in one of his movies back in the days, when he actually tried to be fast and powerful, that would probably be over the top for most people who are not experienced martial artists. So I can see where that criticism comes from and I understand. Yep, nothing to do with the fact that he is an asshole. He's just too powerful. Now this Jesse kid seems nice, but I think he's absolutely enamored with Seagal and blind to the truth. You're a god. Unlike Sloth Master Seagal, most actual martial artists and tough guys are very respectful. Even in the previous interview, Michael Joe White wasn't overly rude or patronizing like Seagal. Sensei Seagal is infamous for not only teaching Anderson Silva that front kick, just kind of get him frustrated and then fake low and come high and do that kick that I've been teaching you. But he also taught him how to chop the hell out of people, and you can see Anderson and his team are eternally grateful. Anderson Silva thinks Steven Seagal is, let me, I want to put this in a respectful way. He, Anderson Silva has a wonderful sense of humor. Mm. And Anderson Silva is very playful. And he thought it would be hilarious if people believed that he was learning all of his martial arts from, from Steven, Steven Seagal. Seagal. Got it. He also loves Steven Seagal movies legitimately. So it treated him with a great deal of respect. Right. He also recognizes that Steven Seagal actually is a master of Aikido. Baz Rutten made it no secret that he hated Seagal and all of his claims of helping MMA and UFC fighters win championships. 
me tell you this, that the guys that I'm training in UFC, uh, you know, some of them have gotten their championship belts, world championship belts, because they've attributed that to me and me teaching them, so I still know a thing or two. For those of you unaware who Baz Rudin was, he was a savage in the MMA and fighting world, a legit machine. I mean, just look at his crazy eyes. He would have munched Seagal. He also made an awesome self-defense video that I highly recommend everyone watches. Boom! That's the first thing to do. I follow up, bang, bang, bang. Right away after that, dang it, the dang it, the dang. Let's see what Baz thinks about Seagal. A colleague of mine is having some issues with his girlfriend. Pricey came up with a fight between Steven Seagal and Boss Rutten. Yeah, without a doubt, that's a short answer. Boss Rutten all said the Seagal. way. He, so I'm sorry, girlfriend, you're wrong. I will slap him, pop, 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 pop in the face, grab his ponytail, maybe a headbutt here and there, and I fold him up. No <laughs> doubt. <laughs> At one point in the early 90s, some heavy hitters in the martial arts community had enough of Seagal's constant trash talking, so they decided to do something about it. They took particular offense to Seagal's trash talking of Chuck Norris and Bruce Lee. Yes, even back in the 80s and 90s, Seagal was talking smack. What a dick. Led by the legendary Bob Wall, a group of respected martial artists issued a challenge, including the likes of Superfoot Bill Wallace, Benny the Jet Urquidez, Dennis Alexio, and of course, Judo Jean LaBelle, and publicly threw out a challenge to Seagal. Let's fight. Anytime, any place, anywhere. Unfortunately, this was a time before Jake Paul and YouTube morons fighting for cash, and this type of challenge was frowned upon. The Dirty Dozen disbanded, and Seagal escaped getting his ass whooped five ways from Sunday. It might be worth noting that to this day, Seagal has never competed in a match, contest, or fight against anybody of note. It's a chicken shit move. I think I can speak for everybody on planet Earth when I say that I'm disappointed nobody fought and pummeled some humility and truth into Grimace. And frankly, it saddens me. All right, Seagullians, we're going to leave it there for part one. Next up, we take a look at what Seagull himself says, as well as stories pertaining to the invincibility of Sensei Cookies. And of course, my definitive and objective conclusion as to whether Big Daddy Seagull is a great martial artist, fighter, and all around badass tough guy. I can hardly wait. To be honest, even I was shocked by my findings and eventual summary. Thanks for watching, Legends. I'll be back soon with part two, but in the meantime, if you want to see Seagal in a love affair with a young lad, check out this video. Or to see the inner fashion stylings of Seagal, check out this video. Peace, Legends. <laughs>